The sewing machine, parts and their functions. Uh, let me alert Mr. Onyango that we are back and would like to study his spare sewing machine. All right. I'll wait right here. Hey, come inside. He has agreed to eat, but wants you to touch nothing. That sounds mean, but I understand though. Good. Touch only when I say touch. So, we are standing right in front of a sewing machine. Mm. This one is a straight stitch machine since it can only make straight stitches. Meaning there are other kinds in the market? Yep. The swing needle machine can make straight as well as zigzag stitches. Mm. It is the machine Mr. Onyango is using currently. I don't think I would tell the difference. Relax. I'll show you definitely. Usually, swing needle machines come with several attachments and inbuilt devices that can perform functions such like embroidery, mm -hmm. making button holes, mm -hmm. piping, blind hemming, darning, ruffling, and so on. I guess you might need to do some explaining later. Mm. Anyway, I take it these attachments are responsible for a swing needle machine doing the zigzag thing. Am I correct? It is not zigzag thing, boy. It is zigzag stitches. Oh. And you are absolutely correct. Now, whether a sewing machine does straight, zigzag, or both stitches, mm. they are operated by either hand, treadle, or power. I do understand the power-driven ones use electricity. How about hand or treadle driven machines? In working with a treadle driven machine, you use the treadle as a brake to stop the needle and the hand wheel to position the needle up or down. Mm. Hand sewing machine on the other hand is a handheld small machine that resembles a big stapler and is mostly used for small repairs at home. Oh, they look Handy. Yes, they are. You mentioned treadle and hand wheel while talking about treadle driven machines. Mind showing me what they really look like? You mean to ask the parts of a sewing machine? I get it. Take a closer look at that chart on the wall. What do you see? Label parts of a sewing machine. Let us briefly discuss each one of them. We start from the top. The spool pin holds the reel of thread while sewing. Mm -hmm. The thread guide holds thread in position from the spool to the needle. The tension disc has two concave discs put together with the convex sides facing each other. The thread passes between the two. The tension of the thread is adjusted by a spring and nut which increases or decreases pressure. And this is a take-up lever. It is a lever fitted to the body of the arm. Its up and down motion helps feed the thread to the needle and tighten the loop formed by the shuttle. Uh, are you following? Uh, you almost lost me, but keep going. Moving south, we have the needle bar. This is a steel rod to hold the needle at one end with the help of a clamp. Its main function is to give motion to the needle. The bobbin case right here moves into position to catch the top thread and form the stitch as the needle is lowered into the bobbin chamber. Mm. The presser foot is fixed to the presser bar to hold the cloth firmly in position when lowered. And the presser foot lifter is a lever attached to the presser bar to raise and lower the presser foot as desired. Mm. And uh, what is this thing? A stitch regulator. Okay. It controls the length of the stitch. The bobbin winder is a simple mechanism that is used for winding thread on the bottom. The fly or balance or hand wheel, when made to rotate, controls the movement of the needle 
during the stitching processes. Mm. And the thumb or clutch screw is in the center of the hand wheel and it engages and disengages the stitching mechanism. Do you learn all this in a fashion design class? Of course. Now, if you stop interrupting, this can end quite soon. The slide plate is a rectangular plate which facilitates the removal of the bobbin case without lifting the machine. The needle or throat plate is a semicircular disc with a hole to allow the needle to pass through it. The feed dog consists of a set of teeth fitted below the needle plate. It helps to move the cloth forward while sewing. And the first plate is a cover which on removal gives access to the oiling points on the needle bar, presser bar, and take up lever. No interrupting. Good for you. The arm is the top part of the machine which houses the balance wheel and spool pin. We use it to hold and lift the machine. The needle clamp holds the machine needle in place. It is loosened when the needle is being removed from the machine. And finally, this is the table, which helps to hold the work during stitching. Whoa, what a lesson that was. Can Mr. Nyango allow me to make a copy of this chart? I need more time to digest all this stuff. That can be arranged. He is a friend anyway. Besides, I also need a copy to demonstrate something for you back at my house. Right.